What's going on guys? I want to do a little trade recap. Very, very simple technical analysis on how I made over $1,100 trading AMD call contracts. So with that being said, I want to give you guys a little bit of context. I basically show you, uh, let you guys know and show you my position sizing. So I was in zero days till expiration contracts. I did take the $99 strikes. Uh, I did buy 10 contracts and I was in roughly um, a little under $2,000 on those total premiums and I made $1,100 on that. So if you guys follow me, you guys are in my Discord or and or uh, been following my YouTube for a while, you guys know that typically I really don't like to trade within the first, you know, like 15 to 30 minutes of the market. I like the market to set up. I like to look at those opening range highs, those opening range lows. I like the day to kind of set up. Now, with that being said, I like to make my money like the brute of, you know, my P&L typically comes in the first two and a half hours of the market open. So I'm living in California. The market's going to open for me at 630. I like to do the majority of my trading between 7 a.m. and around 9 a.m. For me, I find I get the best moves at that time and I like to stay away. So as soon as lunch hour kind of kicks in for that, you know, the Wall Street guys, the New York time, as soon as lunchtime kind of kicks in, I like to like just, you know, kick back, watch the charts, go to lunch, do something, uh, go for a walk, whatever I need to do. And I like to kind of, you know, just kick it for like an hour to two. And then I like to come into the market, you know, maybe back around 11, 1130 my time and kind of see what's setting up. Where's the day's trend at? Is there an opportunity for me to kind of get in on this trade? And lo and behold, I did get in on the AMD trade. So one thing that I was looking at here, um, if we can kind of just see a lot of the sideways choppy action, what time did this come from around eight in the morning? all the way around till really about 1045. So you can see about two and a half hours worth of just sideways consolidation. My chart looks very messy because there's a lot of supply and demand zones here. We're trading up and over and between all these moving averages here, a lot of indicators that were just, you know, fake outs and breakouts and so forth and so forth. So you kind of have to look at a little bit of a bigger picture. Where are where are we at on the actual uh, daily time frame, right? Like where where's the day's price action at? We're still well below the opening range highs that we put in the first uh, 30 minutes of the market, 102.40. So I understand that this is going to be a significant level of supply up here. I would look to uh, sell into this range, which is exactly what I did. Now, if we can kind of quickly notice here, right, you always kind of want to stay with the day's trend, right? So what does that mean? Does that mean that there's not shorting opportunities? No, but for me, I like to kind of stick with the day's trend. So if, you know, if the futures are green and we've been holding all day and we're over the opening range lows and we're over the pre-market lows, typically I'm going to let the pullbacks come in, find some support and look for a long setup. That doesn't mean I'm going to be looking for a short setup and then a long setup and a short setup and a long setup. Now, definitely, if we start losing those first 30 minute lows and the pre-market lows, I'm definitely going to want to take, you know, a short position if there's room to run. For example, if AMD was to lose like $100 or $99.70, this is a short position I would be all over. Uh, from 99 to 96, a lot of room down. But I'm not going to short between 101.28 and like 194 and then 176 and then 146. I'm an options guy. There's not enough room in that trade for me to make any uh, kind of legitimate, serious money. So what I'm trying to say is all of this up and down action is fine. We can pull back all we want to, but I'm going to look to see where does it catch support? Where does it catch support? Where does it catch support? Now, what I was looking at around this time here between 1020 and around this 1045 when I started to really get into my trade here, I was looking at the 50 day moving average. That's the red line here on the five minute time frame. And the reason why I was looking at that 50 day moving average because a 50 day moving average is going to be pretty uh, significant um, level of, you know, respect. You can see we came down, tagged it, bounced, tagged it, bounced, tagged it, bounced, lost it, and then went from a price of 173 all the way down to 143, 30 cents, but we're still holding this channel level. So this channel level is a called the linear regression channel 50. Uh, add it to your charts if you'd like. That price is $100.40. We've held this channel level all day long. Any pullback that is pulled back to any level of demand has bounced, has bounced, has bounced. Now, when I seen this trade reclaim the 20-day moving average, the 50-day moving average, 
uh, the five day moving average, the 10 day moving average, and we're over the trend line. And I'm looking at the NASDAQ futures also climb. I took my stab here. I was going to use $100.35 as a stop loss. That's the channel level that we held all day long. If we lost this channel level, that would tell me there's room to the downside. So that's how I was managing my risk. Why did I take this trade? Because we just reconfirmed a close over the 20 day moving average in correlation with the day's trend. If the day's trend has been up and the futures are green, the day's trend is green. So I'm not looking for the short position unless we lose a macro level of support, of support which is $99.70. What I'm looking for is where do we pull back to? When do we reclaim a significant level of, su of supply, which was a 20 day moving average as well as the 50 day moving average for me? And this candle here at 1050 closes over at 101.06. And that's when I got in on this trade. When we started to break over this $100 area, or excuse me, $180 area, 150 uh, cent area here, we started to reclaim the 20, reclaim the 50 day moving average. I knew that I needed to get in on 10 contracts. That was that was a position sizing that I was comfortable with. And as soon as I got in here, almost you know just below that 101 area we shot to an immediate price of 101.76 and then we came up all the way up to highs of 102.29 so you can see from my entry here below 101 all the way up to 102.29 there was a significant move in those premiums that allowed those premiums to go up 60 70 80 percent and i posted in the discord at one point in time they were at 94 percent and obviously, I, you know, we had a little bit of a red candle here, started to come in, and I just immediately sold, you know, zero days till expiration, especially with 30 minutes left before these contracts are gonna expire. Those contracts are gonna move, baby. So, you know, you, you have to just kind of manage those positions accordingly. I didn't even wanna mess around with that. I think I ended up taking like 68 or 70% on those options contracts, but I just kind of wanted to give you guys my thoughts on what I was looking at, you know, and it's kind of hard when you're looking back at it now and it's like, well, you know, why not take this long setup? Well, this, if you guys are in my discord, you would know why we never took this long setup. Nothing confirmed. Why didn't we take this setup? Well, nothing confirmed. Why didn't we take this setup? Well, it confirmed and then back tested, back tested, back tested, and then still never lost the 50. So always remember, especially for my guys in discord, if the moving averages are this tight, where your 20 is stacked over a Bollinger Band, stacked over the 50 like that, give it the lowest level of supply. Give it the lowest level of supply before you stop out. Or give it the macro area of supply, which was down here at $100.34, which was only a 50 cent risk, right? What's 50 cents for this opportunity to bounce? So technically you could have taken any one of these long setups in here, giving yourself a macro level, and the only reason why you would do that is because you're okay with your risk. Now, if you're in something and you're in 100 contracts, right, and, and you, you, that's your last uh, bit of money that you have, you know, for example, let's say you're in 10 grand and your account size is only 10 grand, you know, definitely I'm not going to say give yourself more risk. You better play that puppy tight to the vest and manage your risk accordingly. But for, for my account size, 10 contracts, even if it wiggled around on me and I gave it a little bit more room to work down here under this linear regression demand zone, wasn't going to kill me, right? Wasn't going to kill me. I'm comfortable with that. So in trading, it's all about what are you comfortable with? How much risk are you comfortable putting on the table? Because if this SOB goes against you, are you going to be crying at the end of the day? Or are you going to be able to shake it off and kind of move along with your day like as if nothing happened. And the 10 contracts for me, zero days to expiration, contracts are cheap. I'm in this thing for under 2000 bucks. Even if I was to lose 500 bucks, it's no skin off my back. But if this thing goes, it's gonna go. And we can see here, a lot of profit taking going into the close here uh, with 12 minutes left, a lot of profit taking. You have to assume this, three day weekend, traders have been trading heavily the past two to three days. Um, getting in and out. There's a lot of profit taking going on right now. This does this changes no narrative going into next week. Understand that this is profit taking going into a long weekend. We're still over the 50 day moving average on the five minute time frame here. We'd have to see where we're really at on like a macro view. Let's take a look at the one hour time frame. We haven't even tested the five day moving average on the one hour time frame, and we're still over the breakout level of $1,078. So profit taking completely okay. Uh, I wouldn't really worry about a down move on AMD until it loses its one hour, 20 day moving average. That's $99 and 40 cents under $99 and 40 cents has room to 96. Keep that in mind for next week. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to join the discord, like comment and subscribe on my YouTube and I'll see you guys all next time.